In U.S. history, there are two famous or infamous oil spills, the Exxon Valdez and BP oil spills. The Exxon Valdez spill, which occurred in March of 1989, occurred when an Exxon tanker transporting oil along the Alaskan coast ran aground on a reef. The damage from the 11 million gallons of oil spilled into the Pacific Ocean was catastrophic, and as a result, the Exxon Valdez oil spill is widely considered one of the worst oil spills in history in terms of environmental damage. The most recent oil spill in the United States occurred in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010 when a BP oil drilling platform incurred damages from an explosion. That allowed an estimated 4.19 million barrels to leak into the Gulf, affecting about 1,100 miles of coast, with Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama feeling the majority of the impact. Oil spills such as these, while a somewhat rare occurrence, present a unique problem that is difficult to solve. Oil is very hard to clean up in the ocean. It spreads across the surface of the water at a rapid rate until a large portion of the ocean and many miles of coastline have been affected. The most popular way to clean up these oil spills is by confining the oil to a certain area using booms, which can be seen in the image shown, and barriers, and then using sorbents to clean it up. However, most sorbents can absorb water and thus sink and no longer absorb oil, are difficult to collect after dispersing, or aren't suited for use at the surface of the water. Thus, many look to synthetic solutions to solve the issues present in oil sorbents, one such being using aerogels. In general, aerogels are defined as porous, solid materials with very low densities. Aerogels can be between 95-99% to 99 air by volume while the rest is made up of the solid framework from dried gel. In addition, they are open porous, which means that the air flows through the solid and is not contained in pockets within the material. The pores of aerogels typically range in diameter from less than 1 to 100 nanometers. Silica aerogel is the most common aerogel and is made of an oxide of silicon. The process of making aerogel can be simplified into the following steps, forming a solution, gelation, aging, and drying. The process is more formally known as the sol gel polymerization. The formation of jello is extremely similar to the formation of aerogel, but in this case the network of proteins that give jello its properties are replaced by silica oxide. The solution in the sol gel process is composed of an aqueous silicon oxide as well as water. Common silicon oxides include tetramethyl orthosilicate, and tetraethyl orcosilicate. Depending on the alkoxide oxide used, the aerogel will have different properties. The usage of alkoxide oxide is beneficial when compared to the previous usage of sodium silicate. We avoid reactions that form salts that need to be removed by washing prior to the formation of the aerogel. When the solution of the alkoxide oxide and water is formed, the solution will begin to gel, in which the final structure of the aerogel will begin to form. After the solution has sufficiently gelled, the final network of silica oxide will have formed, and now we have an alkogel, the precursor to aerogel. This must be dried in order to remove the remaining liquid trapped within the polymer network formed by the silica. At this point, the formation of a network of silica oxide as a result of hydrolysis and condensation has taken place. The process of forming a complete network of silica oxide throughout the solution is extremely lengthy. An acid-based catalyst is typically added to the solution to speed up this process. One typical acid catalyst is hydrochloric acid, a basic catalyst being ammonia. There are side effects from using a catalyst, including minor shrinkage during supercritical drying, as well as the opacity of the gel. Now the gel at this point is an alkogel, as the space that is not occupied by the network of silica oxide is occupied by alcohol, the original solvent of the gel. The alcohol is trapped by the network and is unaffected by the convection or mixing. This in turn means that any movement is via diffusion. A consequence of this dependence on diffusion necessitates for periods of rest between the steps of forming the aerogel, and limits how thick the aerogel can be made, typically limited to 1 to 2 centimeters. Any remaining water must be removed by soaking the gel in alcohol, which again depends on diffusion and by extension the thickness of the gel. This step is critical as any remaining water will not be removed but from the gel by supercritical drying and will result in a dense opaque aerogel. Drying is the final stage in creating an aerogel. The gel is currently an alkogel that needs to be dried in order to obtain the desired aerogel composition. One way of doing so is by evaporation. As seen in the picture, the alkogel undergoes extreme shrinkage and results in a tough, brittle serogel. 
This is not the desired lightweight, strong material that was to be manufactured. Another means of removing the alcohol is via freeze drying. The alcohol gel is first frozen and then subjected to a vacuum in which the alcohol supplements from the gel. This has similar effects on the alcohol gel as evaporation does and tends to be very expensive. Instead of the previously mentioned methods, the alcohol gel is typically dried supercritically, which removes the liquid and leaves the silica network behind. A common means in doing so is via an autoclave, which subjects the alcohol gel to high pressure and temperature. This prevents any surface tension from the evaporating alcohol to build up and essentially break apart the silica oxide network. The alcohol then evaporates off gradually as the pressure in this autoclave steadily progresses to atmospheric pressure. The resulting substance from this process is the desired aerogel, which almost completely retains the silica oxide structure formed when the solution had gelled. Possibly the most important and useful of aerogel's properties is its ability to be manipulated and changed by a process known as functionalization. Functionalization is the process by which a material's properties and or function are changed by altering the chemistry at the surface of the material. Functionalization can occur at any point in the process of making aerogels, during gelation, after gelation, or after drying. While functionalization can be slow, easily messed up, and very complicated, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for aerogels, including the capacity to absorb oil, but not water. Due to functionalization and the various types of aerogels, they possess a wide variety of properties. Some properties are consistent. The low density and porosity will always be true for any aerogel. However, there are some unique differences between aerogels. Most aerogels are hydrophilic. This means that the aerogel will interact with water, possibly dissolving and falling apart, or absorbing the water and shriveling up. On the other hand, some aerogels are hydrophobic and will not absorb water or dissolve in it. This turns out to be a very important property in relation to cleaning up oil spills, as it is a required property to be an effective oil sorbent. The surface of many aerogels are normally covered by hydroxyl groups, which are polar. This causes the hydrophilic tendencies of aerogels previously discussed. However, with functionalization, this hydroxyl group can be replaced with a non-polar group, such as trimethylsilyl, to make aerogels hydrophobic. The fact that it can be made hydrophobic will allow for the aerogel to absorb only oil and no water, which will allow for maximum efficiency when trying to clean up oil spills. Furthermore, it will prevent the aerogel from becoming more dense than water and subsequently sinking. Also, the sheer amount of oil it can absorb requires very little of it to be used in order to soak up a lot of oil, making it easier to manage when dispersing in the oil. As you can see, this aerogel has been functionalized to become hydrophobic. As the water is dripped onto it, it simply rolls off into the beaker, not dissolving the aerogel, or being absorbed into it. However, when gasoline is dripped onto the aerogel, it actively absorbs the gasoline, not allowing any of it to drip into the beaker. Given those two experiments, you can see in the following how it would be an effective oil sorbent. After about 90 seconds, the aerogel allows no oil to remain while absorbing none of the water. While aerogel is an effective oil sorbent, there was a recent discovery, 2013, that created a new, even more effective oil sorbent. Invented by a Chinese professor at Zhejiang University in Hong Kong, graphene aerogel, as it is referred to, is created from carbon nanotubes and giant graphene oxide sheets. This aerogel has many amazing properties, one of which is that it is currently the world's lightest solid, with a density of 0.16 mg per cubic centimeter. Furthermore, it exhibits the necessary characteristics of an oil sorbent. It is hydrophobic and absorbs absolutely no water while also not dissolving in water, and it absorbs enormous amounts of oil. To give some perspective on how much, it absorbs over two times more oil, measured as a percentage of its weight, than the next best oil sorbent, not commercially sold, and two to three orders of magnitude more than the best commercial sorbents. According to the inventors, it absorbs between 215 and 913 times its own weight in oil, and one gram of it can absorb up to 68.8 grams of oil in one second. In addition to all those properties that make it, effect, make it an effective sorbent, this new aerogel uses freeze drying as opposed to supercritical drying, which allows it to be more easily mass produced.